Hey guys, Reed here. Today I'm actually really, really excited to show you something and I know I say that with most of my videos but this time legitimately is the first time in quite a while that something really new and revolutionary has come out for Power BI. Now, what we're gonna have with this new feature is the ability to really easily choose and have a selection on a slicer for various different types of fields from the fields pane. And this could be a selection of columns, like you can see here in the video, where you can actually choose the column in any type of a visual from a slice of selection. Now the other one is the ability to more easily configure a way to choose fields as well. So being able to pick as an example between sales and units or prior year or any of these other ones that you see here. So both of these are things that technically you've been able to do with some really advanced modeling in the past, but now it's super easy to add with new field parameters as an option that's in preview right now. So we're gonna go ahead and explore that and see how to implement this. But man, I, again, I'm very excited for this because this has been something that advanced developers like me have been able to add into reports and models for a while. But now for the average user, it's so much easier to add. So like I always say, let's hop into Power BI and get started. So I'm first gonna start into a workbook to show you what it used to be in the past. Now, this is my waterfall breakdown comparison visual that I have made through a series of videos that I released last fall, where what you do is you have an option over here in the slicer to choose the breakdown. So notice right now that company is here along my axis between these. So I can choose from company to color, to category. Now there are some other fancy things in here. I do have a couple of configurations where if I don't select exactly two countries, it automatically grays everything out and basically indicates that you need to select either two or you need to select less if you've selected too many. Now, again, I will mention that this is another video that I have written that describes all of this. So I'll go ahead and link you to that down in the description below. But for this video, the point that I wanna show you for that breakdown comparison is that this table was necessary. I needed to create this fancy table that union together all of this data in terms of being able to union together metric selections for the fields that are linked to there, slicer selection that's over here for the category selection in the slicer. And then all of that has to have fancy DAX and a bunch of relationships that are inactive here to do all of that. And the beautiful thing is with the new field parameters option, we're gonna to have to get rid of all of this. We don't need any of it in our model. It's gonna be able to be implemented super easily. So let's go ahead and see the simplified version of how to make this now. Here we are in my new report and model. Similar field that we have for breakdown fields here. I, again, can choose between any of these. That changes the axis that you see in my waterfall chart as I move any of these around. So nice and clean and easy. Now if I select this slicer here, notice that we have another table similarly in my model called breakdown fields. Now technically there's actually three fields in here. I'm gonna view hidden. You can see that there's a couple of other things broken down into here. Now we will look at the table in a second, but if we come over to our model view, that breakdown fields is a disconnected table. I don't have anything fancy that's connected to the rest of my model. I didn't have to do any inactive relationships or anything. I just used a new field parameter option. So I'm gonna come back to the report layer here. And the first thing I wanna do is you need to go to file, and if you are watching this and it's still in preview, you need to go to options and options here, and then you need to come to preview features, and you need to make sure that field parameters is enabled. And you can learn more about it here if you desire, but that needs to be turned on for now. If it's out of preview, you won't see this and it'll automatically be turned on by default. I am currently using the May 2022 version of Power BI Desktop for this preview feature. So I'm gonna close out of this, and if you come up to modeling, there is an option now under parameter, look at the dropdown. Previously, we just said numeric range as a parameter. Now we have a fields parameter. Adjust the fields used to build visuals or referenced index. And what we can do in here is we can actually choose either numeric range or fields again here, but I can name this anything I want and I can add my fields into here. So for my breakdown fields, what I actually did is I went through and I just added the fields that I would like to select between. I wanted like color and brand name, any type of dimension attribute that I would like to show between I can drag and drop into here. There we are. And what that will do is it'll automatically add this onto the page. And just like the previous what if parameters, you can have it add the slicer automatically. Now this has already been set up in the model, so I'm not gonna select create, but if I had clicked this create button, that would have created this exact field that I have over here called breakdown fields. Now, a couple of things that I wanna do first. Let's come over to the table perspective over here. And I am gonna zoom in on this a bit so you can see it. Now, what it has done is it has created a table with three fields, breakdown fields, second field in here, and then an order over on the right. Now, the only one that you actually care about using 
is breakdown fields over on the left. The rest of the two are more system columns than everything else. Now it is actually applying a name that it wants for the slicer. Now that can be any name that you want. And then this one essentially is going to be using a new function index called name of, which basically for your purposes, it's retrieving that column from the model. And that also means it is bringing in all of its relationships and everything else. So it basically is just fetching for whatever configuration you have on the visual, that column name. And you can actually, if you wanted to later on, you can come in and you can add additional fields. You can rename this as necessary to choose how that is visible on the slicer. So there is ways to reconfigure this, but the only thing that's visible from the report layer is this one because that is fed into the slicer or into the actual well of any of the visuals that you have into there. And we'll get into the DAX logic to have how this works in a little bit, but let's come back to the report layer and the slicer over here is my breakdown fields. Now in this visual as well, I've also have in the breakdown selection, breakdown fields. So right now, what this one is doing, notice that I can actually have two options in here. I can show selected field, which is actually just returning the name, or inversely, I can show the values of the selected field. So the visual is showing the values from the selected field color, color, and then all of the colors below it. And then as well, subcategory. So all the subcategories, and then the value at the top. So the slicer by default shows the item name, and that's the only thing that can be shown in a slicer, but the visual can choose between either the actual word, which is category, subcategory, color, brand name, or the values below it. And that's what's given me those breakouts. So all of that magic was basically auto-generated and created, and I just have to drop these fields in the appropriate spots in either the visual or the slicer to get that dynamic option. So highly simplified that we've gotten into here. Now, the other thing that's really useful that we've been able to do for years is having a value fields disconnected slicer. Again, we have an option in here now, sales, we have prior year sales being returned or units being returned. Now we used to be able to do that with a disconnected table and a measure with a switch statement. But again, check out here. I have this selected. All I dragged into here is the value field. So similarly, I will show you how to set that up in a second, but let me just go ahead and put the hidden things back away. There we go. All I have in here is a column called value fields. That is being aggregated in here into my value selection. And then the slicer itself just has the name from that. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that table for value fields. Very similar process that was made, three rows, sales, prior year, and units, and then it is simply calling the actual calculations. Now that was made over here under modeling. And again, let me just show you how easy this is to create. I'm gonna do fields. And all I did is I went into here and I grabbed, let's just do sales and units. That was it. I grabbed those two. I created it and then it automatically created that new fields parameter for me that allows me to then again populate it into the well values into here and then additionally add that onto the slicer up here at the top. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look in DAX Studio to see what's actually being ran or calculated with these. And just to give you some context, what I did is I actually have a page in here called Performance Analyzer. I cleaned everything up because I wanted it to be a clean query and basically I have one visual that does two things. It has my breakdown fields for color in this case, and then the value fields can return any of those measures. And then I went up to view, performance analyzer, and I recorded those as we see here. We can do a refresh visual, and then I copied out the query from here, and we're gonna pop up DAX Studio now. And I've already named these and created two different queries. I have category and sales here at the top that I've used from the performance analyzer, and I have color and prior year sales. So two different categories and two different calculations. So let's go ahead and run this one at the top. I wanna make sure to have query plan and server timings turned on and the clear cache. So let's go ahead and run that. There is that table output of all the data. Now let's take a look at the query plan and the server timings actually. So over here runs pretty quick and take a look. It's a really simple, easy query. There's no kind of fancy joins. There's no treat as happening, nothing in terms of anything in the back end that's complex really that's being ran. It is just asking for my sales amount based off of product ID for the product category column. So it automatically knows the implicit relationships and it is bringing all of that in. So it's running really fast. All of the heavy lifting is already done by the model and relationships. You can actually see that we are actually using treat as in here to have product category getting brought in for the fields for the breakdown fields. And then my DAX sales is being used for the fields and the value into here. And then that is what is processed into here where it actually then runs the two columns that I have for category to display on the axis and my sales amount here. Now, as soon as I selected prior year sales, in this case, notice that it automatically just in the visual switched it out for prior year. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. 
run that. And then we actually have three different queries. We have a couple in here because I am selecting prior year, so it requires the use of the calendar table to bring that data in from the previous year. But otherwise, the actual final calculation is just sales amount versus color. So the queries are fast. They run really simply and quickly. And all of that heavy lifting is really being done with the back end of the understanding based off of closing this, anything in here, that name of is doing most of the magic for you. Now more documentation will be coming out soon about this function, but it is a really useful one that does basically all the fancy switching and navigating in the back end, understanding the relationships and what fields to use. So very easy to implement from your front end, but does all of the heavy lifting, the complexities and performance optimization in the back end automatically for you. Now, one other demo that I want to do into here before we head out is the fact that you can now also use these new field parameters in a way to also change hierarchy levels. I have done a previous video on this where I had a series of bookmarks that changed between hierarchy levels in visuals, and I've now done that in here as well using field parameters. I can select things like year, I can select quarter, I can select month and year, and notice that the axis is changing. So this, if we were to come up to the visual pane, my axis is something called date hierarchy. That was another field parameter that I created in here. There's the data hierarchy applied to this. I have this both on the axis for my two charts, and I have that in the slicer up here. And again, that was done from the modeling tab, creating that field parameter. And then all I did was simply add all the fields that I wanted. I wanted the year, quarter year, uh, no, the month and year there, and a date at the very bottom. And that, once I create it, add it to the model, then does all of that switching for me easily, intuitively, and quickly. And because we now have a slicer selection for the hierarchy levels for the date, we can easily create dynamic titles like you see here, where the title will actually change with the level of the hierarchy that you have. So we've seen a scenario where we can change the axis dynamically with a single anchor. The one downside to this though is the built-in hierarchy functions of drilling in, because it's only displaying one axis at a time, is not available. So part of it is understanding if the user needs the drill down function, or just wants like a universal slicer to navigate between levels in all of these. But otherwise, I like the option to be able to just click once and have multiple visuals axes change at the same time. And then of course, with that waterfall breakdown, we now have this dynamic chart where we can choose the values really easily between any of these. No fancy DAX has to be written. And then I can change the axis of any of these very easily as well. So I love having these flexibilities between all of this navigation and interaction experience for the end users. But like I said, I'm amazed that this finally came out. This has been something that for years has been difficult for a lot of people to add because from a dynamic column perspective, you had to build a table that was a mashup of a bunch of other data and then you had inactive relationships and measures that had to use a use relationship function. It is now simple and easy. And then even for disconnected slicers to choose between multiple types of metrics, much easier now. All of the magic has now been pushed to the back end and automated. So you just tell it what you want to switch between and it does the switching for you. Again, hopefully this was a useful video for you. Uh, if you want to check out some of my other recommended videos over here. Otherwise, it's really helpful to like and subscribe and comment on the video if you have any suggestions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.